There's new evidence that Neanderthals, also known as Neanderthals, were at least as intelligent, if not more intelligent, than we are. And that new evidence is they have now discovered the world's oldest known piece of thread, or yarn, was actually created by Neanderthals. Scientists discovered what is the oldest discovered piece of string ever found in a cave complex in the south of France. This is a cave complex that is known to have been inhabited by Neanderthals, and they determined that the piece of string was anywhere from 41,000 to 52,000 years old, which is older than any remains of modern humans have ever been found anywhere in France. So it's very likely, considering that remains of Neanderthals have been found in this cave complex, that Neanderthals did indeed make this string. Before this discovery, the oldest known piece of string was found in what is modern-day Israel, but it is dated to be 19,000 years old, so it is not nearly as old as this finding in modern-day France. The fragment of string was found on a Neanderthal stone tool, and this further makes it very, very, very likely that this string fragment was in fact made by Neanderthals. Not only were Neanderthal remains found in this cave complex, but this type of tool is characteristic of the type of tools that Neanderthals made. So it's extremely likely that this string fragment actually was made by Neanderthals. Now, while a string might seem like a relatively simple thing, it's actually relatively complicated. And the fact that Neanderthals could make string actually opens up a host of other possibilities. It's actually quite possible that Neanderthals actually did use weaving to make clothes. Danny Vendermini, a person who I have debunked, had a very ridiculous theory on Neanderthals. And one of the many reasons why he was very wrong was he tried to claim that Neanderthals had to have fur because they lived in Europe where it was cold. But there are many reasons why Danny is wrong about that. But one of the reasons is there's no reason to believe that Neanderthals could not make clothing just as much as modern humans can. There's actually several other reasons why Danny Vendermini is wrong about that, but that's just one of them. Now, it is also true that in recent years, there have been a lot of other discoveries about Neanderthals that do highly suggest that they were very intelligent. Like just a few years ago, and I made a video about this, I'll leave it a link to it in the description, it was discovered that Neanderthals actually created the oldest known cave paintings, which is in modern-day Spain. And as the authors of this new study say, it is basically becoming pretty much untenable to think that Neanderthals were in any way cognitively inferior to us. This is a picture of the string under an electron microscope. According to the scientists, it's a small fragment of a three-ply cord. It's made from fibers that come from the bark of an evergreen tree. There are three bundles of fibers that are twisted counterclockwise, and then those bundles, once they are twisted, are twisted back the other way clockwise around each other to form a cord or string. Now, the scientists also say that it's impossible for this fiber to have been created by nature. It definitely had to have been created by humans. And Neanderthals were a species of humans. In fact, some scientists argue that Neanderthals should be regarded as the same species as Homo sapiens. But even if Neanderthals were a separate species, they were an extremely closely related species to our own. They were definitely humans. And we know that they interbred with our species. And in fact, most people alive today are part Neanderthal. And frankly, I think it's quite likely that Neanderthals did have language that was just as sophisticated as ours. They probably did talk. This demonstrates that Neanderthals did have an extensive knowledge of trees because you can't just get fibers from all kinds of trees. The scientists think that Neanderthals most likely got these fibers from conifer trees. It also suggests that the Neanderthals knew how to harvest the fibers, which in itself is not that easy. You need to remove the bark from the tree. The best time to do so would be early spring to early summer. And then you need to separate the bast fibers from the bark. 
The bass is actually a fibrous layer of tissue found just beneath the bark of the tree. To separate the bass from the bark, you need to beat it usually, and it helps to soak it in water to aid in separating the bast from the bark. According to the authors, the fact that they bundled the fibers and then plied those bundles into cord demonstrates that the Neanderthals could actually work and think about numbers and had numerical concepts like pairs and sets, which they combined to make a structure like the thread. The fact that they could make thread does imply that Neanderthals could possibly make a lot of things, including doing things like making clothing, making baskets, and making nets. What you do with the fiber after you make the thread also requires at least a basic understanding of counting, sets, and patterns. Once you make the thread, working with fibers requires and probably encourages even more complex thinking. As the authors of this study said, quote, as the structure becomes more complex, multiple cords twisted to form a rope, ropes interlaced to form knots, it demonstrates an infinite use of finite means and requires a cognitive complexity similar to that required by human language. Like I said earlier, I do believe that Neanderthals actually did have language that was at least as sophisticated as our own, and this study does lend credence to that idea. This finding, along with several other recent findings, has shown that Neanderthals were actually very technologically advanced, and in some ways, perhaps more technologically advanced than our own Homo sapiens species was. So I think that it is true that it is becoming more and more untenable to think that the Neanderthals were in any way less intelligent than we are. And I fully expect there to be more and more evidence of this in the future. Thanks very much to my Patreon producer, Lena, aka Lollipop, and my Patreon associate producer, Jamie Joy. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notifications, and select all notifications. It really helps me out when you select all notifications. You can also catch me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at Zorkbid123.